California freshman Democrat Katie Hill announced this past weekend that she is resigning from Congress. And the reasons for that decision are both complicated and unnerving. Last week, the House Ethics Committee initiated an investigation into Congresswoman Hill because of an allegation that she had a romantic relationship with congressional staffer. She has denied that allegation. She has admitted, however, to a romantic relationship with a campaign staffer. But the reason that we know all of this, the reason this has all come to a head, is that Congresswoman Hill is in the middle of an acrimonious divorce from her husband, Kenny Heslep, who she alleges was both abusive to her and also the source of the images of her, the intimate images of her, that have been posted to several sites now, which Hill notes in her statement is illegal. I will fight to ensure that no one else has to live through what I just experienced. Some people call this electronic assault, digital exploitation. Others call it revenge porn. As the victim of it, I call it one of the worst things that we can do to our sisters and our daughters. I am grateful for all of you who have spoken out about this in recent days. As I have before, I will stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves, because there is one thing that I know for sure. I will not allow my experience to scare off other young women or girls from running for office. For the sake of all of us, we cannot let that happen. The rattling reality is that this appears to have successfully forced Katie Hill, a very promising young member of Congress, from office. You're with now someone who studied public opinion and American politics, associate professor of political science at Fordham University, Christina Greer. Um, we, we don't know what we don't know in terms of relationships with staffers. She's denied the relationship with the uh, staff in Congress, and she acknowledged one of the campaign staffers. So sort of putting aside that right. as not great and problematic, and maybe there's more of that, but it really seems like the bad guys won here, to oversimplify. Yeah, well, and I, pu I put it at the feet of certain journalistic outlets, or, yeah, journals. I mean, if you can call them yeah. yeah, exactly, who published these these photos. I mean, this is a form of de like technological domestic violence in some ways, yeah. especially if the soon-to-be ex-husband is behind this. I mean, we know that there is persistent gender bias in the workplace. I mean, you can ask almost every single woman who's been in the workplace, and we know that there are some serious differences between yep. how women and men are treated. But we know in, in the House, as of January 2019, there are 102 women out of 435, the largest class ever. There are 25 senators out of 100, the largest class ever. We know that we have a long way to go for gender parity and gender equity and whole host of levels. And so this is yet another example of we've seen men time and time again be able to ride this out. We have men who are currently in her own state who are waiting just, you know, we'll see if it passes over. They didn't resign. I'm thinking of Duncan Hunter. Duncan Hunter. I'm thinking of Newton Leroy Gingrich, who had multiple affairs right. uh, on his first wife and multiple affairs with his second wife, both with staffers and right. um, campaign aides, right? And so these are ways that men in some, in so many ways, get a pass uh, by the press, they get a pass by their colleagues, they get a pass by their party. Um, and I know with Katie Hill, we're dealing with multiple issues simultaneously, yes. um, ethically and also legally. But something doesn't sit right with a lot of yes. Democrats, and something doesn't sit right with a lot of well, women this evening with how this all sort of shook out. Matt Gates, who's obviously a very conservative member of Congress and very uh, uh, polarizing and polemical figure defended her uh, a, a few days ago. And I think there's, I mean, we should say for apples to apples, Joe Barton, who's a Republican Texas congressman, did have images, intimate images of him posted and published. He did not resign that he announced he was retiring. So that, that is a thing that has happened right. recently, which again, I felt at the time that it was messed up for people to publish that. Right. Like, right. like we should say Red State and Daily Mail, I think are the two outlets to publish this. And like that decision to me is just utterly and completely indefensible. You mm -hmm. are essentially complicit mm -hmm. in, a in a crime, in a statutory violation. But not just complicit, in, you are making it now a story, and it's a it's a titillating story. It's a story that's, that's the other a thing you can't story, get around exactly. Right? And it's this is something that it's not appropriate. It has nothing to do with the other part that we should be addressing. You can also report on it without posting the you can images, which seems to me like part images. of what's happening. The other thing that um, someone on uh, on the all on staff raised today that I thought was a great point is that like. Katie Hill, I think, is around 34, mm -hmm. um, 32, 32 right? right? Mm -hmm. There is an entire generation of yes. Americans yes. who have been taking selfies and images of themselves in various contexts, whether at parties or in intimate relationships and consenting adults. And those images, like, th there's going to be a generation of members of Congress 
and politicians right. where there are thousands of images just around. Right. And it's like, we're going to have to decide as a society right. if we're going to let that be some permanent like source of blackmail mm -hmm. that every person that has a grudge out for you for the rest of your life yeah. that you dated in college and then you go on to be a Democrat and they're a Republican is going to be able to like bring you down with. These are real questions that I have with my students, right? I mean, we talk about they are a generation where to be on their phone, to take pictures and to share them with sometimes total strangers is a very normal process. Right. And I walk them through Gary Hart being on a boat called the monkey business, yes. not even <laughs> doing monkey business to, you know, Bill Clinton with sort of phone calls be before he became the president right. with uh, Anthony Weiner and, you know, DMs on Twitter. Yeah. And now we see sort of running to the full. It's not even the extreme uh, of the line because we don't even know what's beyond this yeah. going forward, which is quite worrisome because we don't want to lose a future generation exactly. of leaders to this type of nonsense. Christina Greer. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.